Good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin again, and um, another uh, after another night shift, uh, work the whole weekend this weekend. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about COVID vaccination in kids, and kind of my thoughts. Of, you know, I, I do a lot of reading about the data, and and um, you know about different things, and I do think that you know we have to look at the data a little bit differently with kids than adults, and the the reasoning is this: is that kids intrinsically are at much lower risk for developing severe COVID. It, you know, it has a lot to do with the fact that the ACE2 receptor, which is this receptor that the, the virus binds to, is really not expressed very well in kids. Or they don't have a lot of those receptors, so they're hard, it's harder for them to get really sick. Um, and also, you know, if you look at the, the course of the pandemic, you know, we've had over 900, you know, almost 920,000 deaths since the pandemic started in adults. How many in the U.S., how many kids deaths have we had? About 600. Um, Germany reported about 150 deaths in children since the pandemic started, and none of those deaths were in healthy kids. So the majority of those kids that have probably died of COVID were kids that probably had significant underlying medical problems, whether they were immunocompromised or, or whatever else. So we've got a population that is at very, very low risk. And you know, with a population of adults that's at high risk, um, you got a vaccine that's very, very safe, but it's not 100% safe, like nothing is. But when we look at the risk-benefit ratio, your risk of, as an adult or an older child of getting COVID and having a bad outcome, be it long-term COVID or a severe case, far, far, far exceeds the tiny risk of the vaccination. But when we're talking about children, especially young children, you know, we know there's about a one in 7,000 chance of developing um, pericarditis if they get Moderna, for example. Um, that's a very tiny number. If I give you a dice that has 7,000 faces on it and they tell you to roll, roll a seven, you're gonna have to roll that dice many, 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 many times to come up seven. So that's your risk of having one of these side effects. However, in that group of kids, especially young kids, their risk of having severe side effects or death from COVID is actually lower than that risk of vaccination. So in young kids, I think we, it's a little bit of a different um, perspective. Now, there's a secondary thought about that because those young kids, if they get it, potentially can give it to lots of other people. So the, the vaccines are safe in children, but I think that that's a conversation you really probably need to have with your, your pediatrician. But, you know, I'm not sure that the data is great for boosters in kids because again, we've protected them when we get when they get immunized, they're pretty well protected. Are they more protected by getting a booster? I, I don't really think the data really shows that. And again, I think it's something you have to talk to your, your doctors about. The second thing is, you know, this, you know, Pfizer's been talking about immunizing younger kids, kids who are less than five. And it went before the FDA just this past week and the FDA passed on approving it, waiting for more data. Well, what happened? Well, you know, the immune response from these vaccines in kids because they're using smaller amounts has not really been as good as they were hoping it would be. And so the plan is to give kids a series of three vaccinations. And it's pretty normal. Like most pediatric vaccinations, you know, are, are three to, to six doses over spaced over time. And I think what we're going to probably end up with is, you know, the, the COVID vaccines just being another one of those pediatric vaccines that everybody ends up, their kids end up getting. But what they did not find from Pfizer's data was enough data to show that, hey, listen, the, the two vaccine doses are that effective and we don't have to wait and study the third dose. And so what they've decided to do is wait till May to get results from seeing kids have gotten all three doses to make sure that that third dose is indeed safe. So it has not been approved yet. And it probably won't be you know, approved if, if uh, you know, probably any earlier than, than May because they're trying to be very, very safe. And again, we're talking about a population that's at very, very low risk. Um, and we want to make sure that we make these calls correctly. So um, I'm not saying that, that vaccinations in kids um, are, are not safe or effective, but the risk benefit ratio is different. And I think that as a parent, you got to take that into effect, in, into account rather. And I think you need to have a, a good conversation with your pediatrician um, and have open dialogue. And so before you make those decisions for your children. 
Um, clear as mud, right? You know, again, our understanding continuously changes as we learn more and more. That's sort of my feeling about pediatric vaccination right now, um, effective, but we have to look at the risk benefit ratios. Um, and I, I don't think the data is good and, and neither do the FDA to uh, roll it out for kids less than five, because we really just don't know if that vaccine series is the right series, if it's effective. And, and for, furthermore, we wanna make sure that it's absolutely safe before we roll it out to a lot of kids. Um, I'm Dr. Galvin, I'm tired after this weekend, it's been long. Um, I will be back with another uh, update. And we also are, are kind of doing some videos about heart health because it is Heart Health Month. Um, so follow us on Facebook and on YouTube. And um, some of the, the heart stuff may just be on Facebook. So if you're a YouTube viewer and you're not seeing all the videos, um, look on our Facebook page um, and I'll, I'll, it's in the, in the show notes. Uh, if you like this, please subscribe. I'm Dr. Galvin. Stay safe. Talk to you soon. Bye.